Okay, so I want to do a real quick video going over a very specific type of instruction, and that's going to be the actual branch instructions. This is the part of assembly where we're not going to go line by line, but start jumping around to different parts of the code. So it's its own different type of instruction, so I just kind of wanted to separate a different video out for it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. All right, so like I said, hack assembly generally goes line by line. So it's going to start at zero, go to one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So just again, iterative process, this only deviates. We do branch instructions, which are typically going to be in an AC pattern, like a lot of them. We load in the instruction one, two, and the assignment instruction. And then this C instruction will be something new we haven't seen before. So without further ado, let's try to get it there. So have the actual program that we write bunch of instructions it's loaded into rom a register is tied to both ram and rom so we've been using it to adjust ram's location and to get finite values like a 19 maybe this is right ram 10 or something but we also use it to go to very specific instructions in rom so maybe we wanted to go to five well we can do that not too hard so we have a specific flow of control generally it's not too hard to follow so we have some zero one two three four starts at zero all the time but when we get to four so zero one two three four all of a sudden go to seven this doesn't have a condition to it so it's going to be an unconditional branch so it's going to go down to seven so flow control now is seven eight nine and this says go to two. So now it goes to instruction two. Two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four. And you can see that we are in an infinite loop because we have unconditional branches that are kind of just looping to each other. Five and six, never going to get executed. Anything past 10 will never get executed as well. So we're just stuck in this infinite loop. So to get around that, we have the idea of conditional branches. So again, flow of control, zero, one, two, three, four, just like last time. When we get here, we now have if condition go to seven. So we have to have some condition. We'll get to what those are in a bit as well. So flow of control here is if the condition is true, then we do seven, eight, nine. So it just goes from here to there. Otherwise, we just fall through and keep on iterating. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on and so forth. Now this is where all those conditions are this is where the actual setup for how these are going to work is so let's just go ahead and take a real quick look at this so starting on the left side at instruction two we have if d is greater than zero go to six so what this is saying is that six is the instruction that we want to jump to this d is greater than zero is the comparison that we are going to do so over here on this right side we have kind of this chart of all these different instructions we have djgt djge djlt djlee djeq djne and then finally zero jmp now you might notice all of these very similar and this one kind of stands out. So let's look at this last one first. So if you look at it, it's just jump. This is the unconditional branch we were looking at earlier. So it's going to jump no matter what. Whereas all these previous ones have D on the left side of the semicolon and then some form of J two letters. So the J stands for jump. And then the last two letters are going to be greater than for this one, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal to, not equal to. So the two letters are indicative by greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal to, and then not equal to. So should be pretty descript on what's happening here, but this is the comparison. And every time in hack assembly, we do some form of comparison. It is always comparing against the value of zero. That will get explained in the next chapter 
but for now, just know we always compare against zero. Now the left side, you might think, oh, we always have B. Not so much. This is going to be explained more in the next video, but, well, not the next video, but maybe when you after that, it'll, it'll get described this chapter. But what's happening here is D in this case is what we're comparing. It could be something like D plus one. It could be A, could have A, J, L, E. That would be a proper instruction. It's not what you'd want to do. The general approach is to just store whatever value you want to compare in the data register and then do the comparison. You don't have to do that, but it is a standard approach and it is generally the best approach. So that's why you see it as examples. This one, again, we have zero but we don't do comparison, so it doesn't matter. So you can just load whatever you want and it's still always going to jump. More on that in a future video as well. So finally, the actual code that happens is going to be at six because we need to load six as the ROM. So we're doing ROM six in this case. So whenever we have something pointed at in ROM, that's not the instruction we're at. That is currently the value loaded into the program counter because the program counter is what dictates what we would be looking at when we're going to go to instruction because remember it has the ability to either store the current instruction iterate to the next instruction load a completely new instruction or reset to instruction zero so this is that part of loading a new value doesn't mean we're there yet but we have the potential to be there this C instruction here is what would actually jump to that and then load in the new value for the program counter. So we look at D and we need to do a comparison to greater than. So if it rings true, then it is going to jump to ROM six. Otherwise, it's just gonna keep on going. Not a big deal. So just as a few examples here, we have one very simple one. And then one that's going to be more of a typical approach, but a little bit more complex. So for the very simple one, we just take a look at if D equals zero, that's my comparison, go to 300. So we already know we need to get ROM 300. So let's just go ahead and load that in. Not a big deal. And we're getting lucky here because we are using the D register and just using zero, which is what comparing against. So we can take a look at equal zero. We just need DJEQ. That's it. At 300, DJEQ. So point to round 300, do a comparison, and that's it. Not a big deal. Now, if the value at RAM 3 is less than 100, go to 12. So, this has a good bit more going on. Of note, we're not comparing it to zero here. We're comparing it to value 100. So we also don't have the D register. We have RAM 3. So there's a completely different approach here. So we need to get this down to some approach that is similar to something in this chart. Okay. So right off the bat, we know that we're going to be dealing with at three in some format because we need the memory value there. We're going to be dealing with at 100 in some format because we need the actual finite value. Then we have at 12 in some format because we want that to be the value that we jump to or the actual value loaded in ROM to jump to. So there's going to be multiple ways of doing this. And I'm going to do it in a particular way that's going to deviate from the next slide, but I'll explain the two differences. Now the one is right, now the one is wrong, but for now, let's just take a look at the actual, let's take a look at the comment here and see what I can do about that. So, let's say we transform this, let's just assume on this map first. It's very easy in this format to get a comparison at zero. All you gotta do, very basic algebra. So, Track both sides by 100. Now all of a sudden, we have RAM 3 minus 100 is less than zero. That gives us the comparison to get zero. So we're halfway there. And then we just need to store this value 
into d, which would give us the form of d is less than zero. So we can tell that we're going to want to do djlt eventually. So let's get this math dealt with first. I'm going to do it in the sense that we're doing a subtraction. So I place priority on this part because it's going to be a session order that part needs to actually happen specifically. So at 100, I want the actual finite value, so I'm going to use the A register. D equals A, so now I have the value of 100. I need to subtract that from the value at RAM 3. So I will now do at 3. Using the M register this time, I will do D equals M minus D, because I want to subtract from the value at RAM 3. Now we have D equals A for 100. M minus D is RAM 3's value minus 100. Now we have the left side. And we want to jump to line 12 and do D, J, L, E. Just like this. this is exactly what I need to do. Now, let's take a look at a different way of doing it. This it's pretty much the same thing, except for the math to get there is kind of reversed. So if you recall, I did at 100, D equals A to get the finite value, at 3 to go to RAM 3, D equals M, the value at RAM 3, minus D, which is that constant value I stored earlier, and then at 12, D, J, L. So their comparison is a little bit different. And most of it is go to RAM 3 first and then get the constant value. There's no right or wrong approach here. There's no optimal or suboptimal approach here. It is practically the same, just a different approach. And then our actual branch instruction is identical. So again, neither one of these approaches is wrong. It's just showing the fact that there are multiple ways to achieve the same goal of assembly. Not a big deal. So that is kind of the idea and gist of how branching works. It's honestly a pretty simple video because there's no point in getting it too much more complicated right now. That last slide where it shows the RAM 3 minus or RAM 3 minus 100 is the approach to solve whenever you don't have a comparison at zero. That's probably the most complicated part of branching. It's not the actual comparison and branch itself, it's the math that precedes it. That is the difficult part when it comes to branching, is to make sure you get the math down correctly. That's about it. So, hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video.